Hi, welcome back to Logic. This is our third week. Uh, so 4.2, we're discussing the question of the quality, the quantity, and the distribution of categorical propositions. Um, the quality of a categorical proposition is namely we have an affirmative quality, a negative quality. Right, so I don't know if you can recall, but there's four types of categorical propositions. There's the A proposition, which says all S or P or all men are mortal. There's the E proposition, which says that no S or P or no men are immortal, let's say. Um, there's the I proposition, which says that some men are alive, right, or some S or P. And then there's the O proposition, which says some S are not P, or in other words, that some men are not living. That would be another example of that. Now, when we talk about the quality of an argument, we're talking about whether or not, I'm sorry, the quality of a proposition, we're talking about whether or not that proposition is affirmative or negative, right? The quantity concerns either universals or particulars, right? So the first two propositions, the A and the E, right? All men are mortal, no men are immortal. Both of those propositions are universal, right? Because you're saying that the entire class, you're saying something about the entire class, right? For the entire class in a universal statement. Now, obviously, whenever you see the word some, clearly the proposition is particular, right? Because you're just talking about um, a few of the members of that class. And actually, in logical vernacular, when we say some, we just mean at least one. Distribution is essentially concern concerns. Uh, the relationship between the subject and the predicate within the statement. Or another way of thinking about the distribution is, for instance, you can ask yourself, um, what do I learn about the entire class of something um, in a statement? So, for instance, we're going to see that when, you, when I make an A statement, such as all men are mortal, right, or all S or P, actually what I'm learning about Right, is I'm learning about the entire class of S's, right? all of the S's or P's. I'm not necessarily learning about all of the P's, but just the S's. So if I say all men are mortal, right, I, what I'm learning is that all of, all of the members of the class of men or human, human beings are mortal. That doesn't mean that I know about everything that's mortal, right? Because the class of mortal is much larger than human beings because all the animals are mortal, all the insects, etc., etc. So mortality is much larger than humanity itself, right? So when I say all men are mortal, I'm really just learning about S. So what we say here is we say that the S is distributed within that statement. And I'll throw this on the board so it's a little clearer. Um, the E statement, when I say no S or P, right, or no men are immortal, Actually, what we say is we say both the subject and the predicate, the S and the P, are distributed. And the reason we say this is because I'm actually learning something both about uh, the class of, in this case, well, I think my example was no men are immortal. I'm actually learning something about the entire class of men and the entire class of immortality. Namely, that they're non-congruent. They don't go together whatsoever. So I've actually learned something about both of them. So what we say is that both terms are distributed, right? So in the A statement, only the subject's distributed. In the E statement, both the S and the P are distributed. Now, what about the I statement, right? Which is some S are P, right? Or the example we might give is some politicians are corrupt, right? Are we actually learning something about the entire class um, of either one of those terms, with either one of those terms, right? So the two classes where I had to say, some politicians are corrupt, right? Um, my, my subject are politicians, and my predicate in that statement are is that of corruption. And so, remember, distribution, the question is, what am I learning about the entire class? Well, actually, I'm learning nothing about the entire class because I don't really know, I'm not saying anything about all of the politicians and neither am I really learning anything about all of the things that count as being corrupt. So actually what we say for the, for the I proposition is that actually nothing is distributed, neither the S or the P. And in terms of the O statement, right, some S or not P, what we're learning there is we're essentially learning that the P is distributed, or the predicate is distributed, right? So what's another example we might think of? So, oh, here's an example I think I gave in my last video. Some highway patrolmen are not merciful, <laughs> right?
right? When I say some highway patrolmen, the two classes there is highway patrolmen, and the other class is merciful. What I'm learning there is I'm learning actually nothing about the subject there, um, the entire class. Of I don't know from that statement some highway patrolmen are not merciful. I don't learn anything about all the highway patrolmen, but I do learn something about the idea of mercy. And namely that there's some members of this subject class that don't apply to it, right? So I have learned something. In a certain, many people, I think, find the O oh, proposition the hardest to kind of intuit or understand. But actually, the predicate is what's uh, distributed in that term. So I'll put this up on the board so you can see it in just a moment. Um, so that's the idea of distribution. So I guess without further ado, let me show you that video real fast. The quality and the distribution. So, let me give you an example. Let's take all of our propositions, right? So we have our A proposition, right, which is all S or P for all the subjects are the predicates. We have the E proposition, which says no S or P, right? And then we have the I proposition, which says some S or P. That was our example we just did. And then we have our O proposition, which is some S are not B, right? So those are all of our four propositions. And what we can learn about those propositions, or let's see what we can say. Let's start on over here. Let's ask ourselves about the quality, right? The quality of the A proposition, remember, is it an affirmative or negative? Um, sorry, it's this, this light makes it harder to see. But there you go. Uh, the quality here, right, this is affirmative, this is negative, this is affirmative, and this is negative. Now, if we ask our question not about the quality, but instead about the quantity, what we'd say is that this is a universal, this is a universal, this is a particular, and this is a particular, right? Because we have some here, some here, but here we have universal statements. Okay, so now the question though, the hardest question, this is where I think you'll have probably the most trouble, is the question of distribution, right? How are the terms related? Okay, so let's look over here. So in this first statement, the A statement, all S or P, the question is which class do we learn something universal about? We actually learn something universal about the S. So we can say that the subject, sorry, that pen is dead. We can say that the, we learned that the subject is actually distributed into the predicate, right? We're saying all of the S's are included within the class of P. And in terms of the E statement, we're actually learning something about both classes. So we can say that both terms are actually distributed in the sense that none of the S's are related to the P's and none of the P's are related to the S's. In the case of if some S or P's, our last example, Right? We said that nothing is distributed, so we don't have to write anything there. And in the O statement, sum S or not P, here, right, the only thing I learned in terms of the entire class is namely P. So I could actually say that P is distributed here, right? Because I'm learning that none of the S's are included within the P's, which tells me something universal about all the P's, but not about the S's. Right? So as a result, what I could write here is that the S is distributed. The S and the P are distributed. The P is, I'm sorry, nothing is, right, I'll put NA here. Nothing is distributed. In here, the P is distributed. So this may seem fairly tedious at this point, but it's going to become fairly important as we go through the logic book. Um, so keep in mind, this is the distribution pattern. Because ultimately, distribution tells us something about the validity of the arguments, or it'll help us understand that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm.